need a new line of computers. This is NVIDIA's new DGX, $150,000. Tell me this isn't what they want, huh? Upgradable computers are dead. NVIDIA just killed modular computers, guys. It's over. You're wondering, who am I? I'm just some guy walking in an alley, and I'm telling you today that PC gaming, as you know it, will be changed forever. NVIDIA is changing the scene and they're gonna get their money out of you one way or the other. So today we're gonna to talk about NVIDIA's latest computer technologies, soldered CPU, soldered GPU, and soldered memory all together. You are not gonna be able to upgrade a thing without NVIDIA's consent, guys. Let's talk about it today. So imagine this, on the left here, we have your classical computer. This is how computing today as we know it will look, okay? It's slow, sure, it, 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 you can see all the details, sure, it's kind of fun to put PCs together, um, but it's slow. And on the right here, this is the future of computing, and this is what NVIDIA wants. It's quick, it's fast, and it's profitable. What am I talking about here? Today I'm talking about NVIDIA's announcement of the DGX system. Okay guys, they came out with this thing called DGX Spark. It looks kind of like a MacBook killer, at least for AI. It's just some small little box. It's got, you know, ARM CPU cores and an NVIDIA GPU on the same package there with LP DDR5X memory, up to 128 gigabytes of it. And on a 256 bit bus, so really not too bad of specs, it only uses 170 watts of power. and. I'm estimating this thing to be around the performance level of a 4070, at least by the AI tops they're giving us here. Now, honestly, it probably has more CUDA cores than a 4070 since it's using so much less power, um, but the memory bandwidth's a lot less, so it's gonna be interesting to see how this thing actually performs, but it's basically like a MacBook, but made for AI, made by NVIDIA, and this is what they're trying to do to convince you guys you do not need a PC that's upgradable and they're sacrificing um, the sake of modularity. Woo, it's loud. That UPS driver did not care about Silicon Stakes video at all. Well, it's sacrificing modularity sake for power efficiency and performance using DLP DDR5X memory, at least on this little MacBook killer right here. And it's actually interesting. I keep on saying MacBook killer, but in their show, they actually showed someone using a MacBook uh, laptop next to this thing, uh, kind of using it as like a server, I guess. They kind of want you to use this as like a little AI cluster server. You can connect it through um, Ethernet for this DGI, DGX Spark and uh, kind of use them like little compute clusters, what people have been doing uh, with the M4 uh, MacBook, like the base model, right? So, but the difference between this and that MacBook was that $600, sure, it only has 16 gigs of RAM, and this starts at like $4,000. Now, Asus has a model that's $3,000, but it's not as good as the NVIDIA's model from my understanding. So right off the bat, NVIDIA's entering this new space and they're not being aggressive at all with this pricing. I mean, that seems like gouging to me, man. Like, sure, this thing has got 20 ARM cores. It looks like 10 performance, 10 efficiency. They're two separate cores. I'm assuming one of those is efficiency, right? And if you get 128 gigs of memory with that, I mean, it's pretty good, but can't you get more memory with an Apple product than that? And I'm sure the Apple ecosystem is going to be much more, you know, rounded out computing wise than this Nvidia scene. Now, who knows for AI, this probably is gonna be the bee's knees. It's got CUDA support and all that jazz, but I don't know. I don't know, I'm a little skeptical of the price there, NVIDIA. I think you can do better than that when you're entering into this new market, right? It's like a little data center. This thing is just a small little mini data center in the shape of a MacBook. Kind of cool that NVIDIA is even giving this to consumers here. Now, something that's more interesting that caught my eye that made me see the canary in the coal mine moment of modularity is going to die. <laughs> it's funny, I saw a Reddit post about this one year ago on the LTT subreddit, someone said, guys, I'm scared of the future, man. Um, modularity, upgradability in these PCs is done. It's game over. 
and five, 10 years from now, Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA are all gonna be using soldered chips in memory and we're gonna be under their mercy. And everyone in the comment section was like, bro, you're stupid. They've been saying this for years, but I mean, look guys, look at Strix Halo, look at Lunar Lake, and now look at this from NVIDIA. The modularity, um, the death of modularity, the soldered revolution is coming for us all. And guys, I, I think this guy had a point and I think he had excellent foresight because I think really five, 10 years from now, most of our products are gonna be soldered. We aren't gonna be able to upgrade the RAM on desktop platforms. And let me explain why. We talked about the DGX Spark, you know, it seems kind of just like a more of like a dabbler um, machine. Like you aren't gonna be doing serious work on this. I mean, you could, it does have 20 CPU cores, but it's only 170 Watts. Now this other thing they showed off, it's called the DGX, um, what is it called? Let me pull it up here on my phone. DGX station, DGX has left the station guys. This thing <laughs> uses a Blackwell Ultra chip, which, correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is two um, high-end Blackwell dies glued together, right? That's from my understanding what the Ultra chip is. It's kind of like um, copying Apple in that regard. And this thing is absolutely insane. Let me pull up the spec sheet. 72 Grace ARM cores, that's CPU ARM cores, 72 of those, 288 gigabytes of high bandwidth memory, HBM 3E, and that gives us eight terabytes per second of memory bandwidth on this thing's integrated GPU. Absolutely insane right there, guys. And actually what caught me off guard was not the specs on this thing, but the form factor, right? This thing is on a motherboard and it has three, 16, uh, three PCIe 16X slots. Now, that, may be kind of cool right we got some modularity there we can throw in some graphics cards some ethernet nicks all that jazz but what caught me off guard was they're kind of marketing this thing as a workstation computer and it's not as modular as you think because the cpu and the gpu are um soldered right as well as the hbm that hbm is on package with the gpu the cpu is actually a separate um, chip on this computer as far as I understand it and that has LP DDR5X so all of that is soldered to the board right there I think they do have a couple of NVMe slots or I could be wrong maybe that's soldered too it's set up to four terabytes or no that was on the DGX spark so this one yeah should have NVMe slots so the least memory is modular and oh this is gonna look not very good who I need an ND filter Whew, I need an ND filter, bad. Um, what was I talking about? There's probably dogs up here. They're marking this as their workstation platform. I wonder, and I'm really considering this, how long is it gonna take for them to start using their silicon for their GPUs and just soldering it to boards like this, selling us that, selling us a gaming system that is just all soldered. Guys, I'm wondering because I don't think it's gonna be long at all. UPS, yeah. Bringing in GPUs to all you guys. Thank you for your service. Thank you, sir. Giving us all new GPUs this Christmas season. It's not Christmas, but. This thing also comes with up to 496 gigabytes of LP DDR 5X. That's for CPU memory, right? So the other one was GPU memory, 288 gigabytes of GPU memory. That is uh, whew, at eight terabytes a second. Okay, I can see this thing how much memory is that total? Let me put it on screen. But honestly, I can see this thing costing 20 grand, 30 grand for one of these systems. And you can compute and cluster these things together. They have these um, NVLink links things and they're like up to 800 gigabytes a second or something like that. Um, or is it gigabit? I think it's gigabit. I could be wrong though. I think it's 800 gigabit per second and you can just connect multiple systems together. Have your own little AI server farm in your house and these things are gonna cost so much money but let's be real guys they're gonna be way more efficient than just running a gpu farm with regular pcie graphics right we know that like a graphics card on itself like the 5090 can consume 600 watts meanwhile this dgx spark system only consumes 170 i think it could easily surpass 
a 5090 in performance. Um, the Spark and this main one, this one that's Giga Chad with eight terabytes of memory bandwidth. I mean, you're gonna be getting um, server enterprise level performance in your little room, in a room that probably consumes maybe like a thousand watts, maybe like 1600 watts. I don't know, honestly, how much it's gonna consume. I don't think it's on the sheet yet. The dogs, bro. Oh my gosh, dude, there's so many dogs that live in this neighborhood. I was on a walk two days ago, okay? And I'm, you know, just walking. I'm not filming at this point. I like to take walks in my free time. And all of a sudden I hear a dog barking behind me. I turn around, instantly this dog barks me, not barks me, instantly this dog bites me in my right leg. And I'm like, what the heck? And it bit as hard as it could, like it left a mark. And I had pants on. And then I look up and I see there's four other dogs with it. So there's a pack of five dogs and these are like pit bulls. Like these are big dogs that could rip silk and steak limb from limb if they all attacked me at once. And I was kind of scared for my life. I just yelled, no, like get off me dog, get off. And I, you know, didn't run away. I got all big up in their face and they all ran away, told them to scram. So I was kind of scared for my life there. I'm not trying to get mauled by dogs. So just a little backup story for that. A lot of dogs in this neighborhood. Getting back on track though, this DGX station, you know, tons of memory bandwidth, um, the ability to connect multiple stations together, build a AI server farm in your living room, in your room. And yeah, this is exactly what Nvidia wants. They want to be manufacturing and supplying the whole system to you so they can mark it up all they want. They don't like seeing AIBs. They don't like seeing retailers scalping their products. They, went, they want it all in on every cent that they're making off an NVIDIA product. So they want to be they want to be the ones selling these things to you. Now, I, I know Supermicro and um, uh, like Dell and system integrators are going to be getting in on this action, handling all the necessities and little details of these systems. But at the end of the day, I think NVIDIA is making the majority of the money from these servers. So my whole point is to say that AMD Strix Halo switching to on-package memory, on-package GPU, CPU, non-upgradable. Intel with Lunar Lake. Now they're moving away with that with Panther Lake a little bit, but I'm sure they'll be back. I mean, this is the future. Like, I don't know why Intel can't see where the future's going. It sounds like AMD is making an ARM CPU. You know, NVIDIA is pushing ARM CPU. I, I believe that a few years from now, we will be seeing mainstream ARM gaming, maybe more than a few, maybe like four or five years from now. We'll be seeing NVIDIA is like, nope, we aren't making graphics cards for you anymore. We, I mean, they might make a little, but it's not gonna be a lot of capacity. We're just making these APUs, ARM CPU cores, uh, bundled with the GPU, all soldered on package, with on package memory, of course, that you can't upgrade. They'll still be giving us eight gigabytes in 2030, I'm sure, <laughs> which is amazing memory compression technology. And Intel's gonna be here still on x86, still with discrete graphics cards probably or if that hasn't died by then and they're just gonna be the odd ones out to some dinosaur like i don't know why they don't see the future maybe their new ceo which they got this new giga chat ceo he's asian and he knows the industry really well and hopefully he's gonna turn the ship around but yeah um i don't know why intel can't see the future they need to develop an arm trip 100 percent arm I think really does have a lot of efficiency advantages over x86. I've tested Lunar Lake and I still think ARM is the king of efficiency there. Your modularity, your upgrades of your gaming PC is dead. Upgrade while you can. The end days are near, man. The end days of upgrading is near. NVIDIA is going to scalp us for every dollar that we have. We're going to have NVIDIA smartphones, NVIDIA soldered computers, everything, NVIDIA CPU cores, uh, NVIDIA, NVIDIA RAM and nvidia storage guys it's all going to be them their sticker on it think of what apple is now but even worse guys really i think it's even going to be worse than apple with when it comes to um just corporate greed guys when it comes to corporate greed i really do think it's going to be that bad so yeah guys what do you think am i crazy am i like that guy on the reddit post a year ago thinking that upgradability modularity in PCs is over. I think this NVIDIA uh, DGX Spark and this other NVIDIA motherboard with all this amazing silicon on it is gonna sell out like hotcakes. And I think NVIDIA isn't gonna learn anything from how they treated gamers, guys. And we're just gonna be drinking 
we're gonna just be eating out of Nvidia's hand at this point. Whatever Nvidia gives us, whatever slop and scraps they give us, we're gonna be getting. I don't see them wanting to manufacture discrete, you know, low margin comparatively low margin. It's still insane margin. Um, discrete GPUs in the future when they can give us on package CPU, on package GPU with that on package memory and charge 70% plus margin for this crap, man. Why would they give 40% margin on a GPU and then give a 70% margin on the whole package, right? Actually, just the other day, today maybe, somebody commented, you know, Moore's Law is dead. There's no more advancements to be made. And this is NVIDIA's world. We're just living in it. That's basically what this man said. And well, the last part, I think he's right on. The part before that, I don't think he's totally right. I mean, what his assumption is here, you know, this latest generation of GPUs, there's so much going on outside right now. Uh, this latest generation of GPUs, had, we saw like no performance gains, right? Especially like tier to tier. And that's honestly because Nvidia just didn't give us any bigger die size. And number two, because, well, they're on the same node, right? Of course, there's not gonna be any performance advancements when you're on the same node. Unless Nvidia gets generous and decides to give us more silicon, it's just not gonna happen, right guys? So I think in that assumption, I don't think you're totally right. I think next generation, we're gonna see a huge performance gain. Maybe not as much as going from 30 to 40 series, but somewhere in between that, probably like 40%, 50%, maybe like 40% on average tier to tier. So like the 5080 or the 6080 will be like 50%, 40%, probably 40% um, on average faster than the 5080, you know, 60, 70. 50% faster than the 5070, that kind of thing. I think we will be seeing that because we'll be going to gate all around transistors, TSMC two nanometer or Intel 18A. It could happen guys, it could. And I think we'll be seeing great performance gains, but I don't know. When it comes to Moore's Law being dead, there's other levers we can pull. And unfortunately guys, removing our modularity and upgradability in PCs is a lever we're gonna have to pull at some point. We, they've already been doing it in APUs and laptops and just look at Strix Halo, guys. It, we're doing things we weren't able to do before. So I'm all for you know removing upgradable RAM. I'm all for removing socketable CPUs and GPUs to get that extra power efficiency and to get that extra performance. Just don't charge me an arm and a leg. Don't rip my wallet out of my hands, empty it and hand it back half torn just to give me another 20% performance, guys. That's all I'm saying. I think the future with AI and memory access, memory bandwidth is going to be soldered memory, soldered CPU and GPU. And unfortunately, these companies are obligated to get as much profit as possible. So Nvidia is starting it now and, in, and AMD is gonna follow. And I think Intel will be last and they'll, they'll try to catch up. But what do you guys think? I think um, a few years from now, we aren't gonna be able to get a, 50, you know, a 70, 90 or 80, 90 a discrete GPU. I think it's just going to be an uh, NVIDIA system that's ARM and guys NVIDIA is going to find a way to make ARM gaming work on Windows or Linux or whatever. They're going to come out with some compatibility layer, just brute force it with their CPU cores and it's going to work. Maybe not as good as we hope, but it's going to, they're going to do something and we're going to be just buying a system that's honestly unbelievably power efficient and it'll be really good. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's a grim future that I think at first will be really exciting and then we'll be paying the price for it later. So that's just my thoughts, guys. What do you think? Silicon Steak, signing out. Ever review every spec he's on deck from GPUs to CPUs he knows it all no question too big no detail too small he's got the knowledge he's got the skill when he drops his take the haters stand still